Now, will you notice here that when he does this, our Lord forgives this man. And I read verse 6 now, "...there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts." And they are the enemy. Now, they didn't speak out. They just thought this. And this was what they thought. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemous? Who can forgive sins but God only? Now, they're wrong in the first question, right in the second. This man was not speaking blasphemous. They said, who can forgive sins but God only? And they're right in that. Only God can forgive sin, you see. No judge has any right to let a criminal off. His business is to enforce the law. God's the moral ruler of this universe, and he must defend his own laws. He can't be lawless. That's just one thing even God can't be. Having made the laws, why, he obeys those laws. And his laws are inexorable. They're not changed at all. But you and I are guilty before God. We need forgiveness of sins, and he forgives, not just because he's big-hearted. He forgives us because Christ paid the penalty for our sins. And therefore, the Lord Jesus was not speaking blasphemy because he was God, and he'd come to the earth to provide a salvation even for this man here. Now, these men didn't speak out, you see, but they thought this in their hearts. Verse 8, And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Now, you see, he tries to draw them out. But these men, they've had a run-in with him before, and they always came away with a bloody nose, and they decided the best thing to do here was to keep quiet, and they did. Our Lord says to them, Why are you reasoning this way in your heart? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. And by the way, they're not about to answer that at all. They're quiet. And since they are quiet, why, he's still going to deal with them, you see. He knew what they were thinking. In the Gospel of John, John 2.25, it says he needed not that any should testify of man. He knew what was in man. And the questions they raised, now the Lord Jesus, he puts them on a spot. And he says, which is easier, to forgive this man or to say to him, rise and walk? And though they didn't answer I'm sure they would have had to have answered and said, well, for us, it's just as easy to do one as the other. Or, to put it a little differently, it's impossible for anybody but God to do either one. And that was right. And that's the reason the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to say to this man, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And the old Scotch commentator said the reason he told him to take up his bed and walk was he'd not have a relapse. He wouldn't be back on that bed. He wouldn't be coming back to the stretcher. He's going to walk from here on. When our Lord healed, he did a good job. Now we're told, and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Now, you see, this is a gospel of action, and this is one of the miracles of action. Now we still have action, although there's not a miracle here, but there's a lot of action in the gospel. Verse 13, And he went forth again by the seaside, And all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Now, this is the call of Levi, or Matthew. And Matthew, by the way, belonged, of course, to the tribe of Levi. And imagine that, the priestly tribe. And here he has become a publican of all things. And by the way, this ought to answer the question about the ten lost tribes. This is one of the many places where you find individuals that belong to the other tribes except Judah. When anyone tries to say 
that we've got ten lost tribes today. They might be lost as far as those folk are concerned, but this is no Easter egg hunt. They've been found. Here's one of them right here, the tribe of Levi, and he's one of the disciples of our Lord. And our Lord calls him here. This is a remarkable incident. Now, you remember Matthew told us nothing about the fact that he gave a great dinner and invited some of his friends. And the only kind of friends he had was sinners, by the way.